Let's all take this opportunity to tuck in our ties. Our uh, next guest has performed at clubs all over Canada and the United States, including the Improv in Los Angeles and also Catch a Rising Star and Stand Up New York here in Manhattan. And now, making his network television debut, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Norm MacDonald. Norm, are you... Well, thanks. Good to be here. Uh, uh, I've been traveling around a lot, watching a lot of the TV, you know, and uh, you've seen these new sports on the TV where they'll try to combine two sports together and make up a new sport. You know, like a guy will run a hundred yard dash and then fish. <laughs> so I love the TV. You know, I saw a cat food commercial and I said at the end of it, I said, all natural food for your cat. All natural food. But cat food is made out of horse meat. Yeah, that's the way it works in nature. The, the cat right above the horse in the food chain. <laughs> Matter of fact, every time my kitty gets a little cooped up in the apartment, I, I need to take him down to a racetrack, let him stalk some prey down there. It's so cute, he comes trotting back with a stallion hanging out of his mouth there, you know. It's... But I love the TV, you know, anything at all. The only thing I don't like, you ever see it when there's a celebrity that you really respect and admire? And then he shows up on some cheap TV show, you know? Last week, I was watching the, the Hollywood Squares and a secret square, J.D. Salinger. <laughs> well, I like game shows. That's my favorite thing, you know? Big prizes and everything. You ever see the dating game? You ever see that show? That's a weird show there. The prize on that show, another contestant. <laughs> Talk about cheap. And they always do the same thing on that show. They get a beautiful girl, match her up with three giant dorks. <laughs> Last week they had a guy on. It was a crazy guy. Looney bin, psycho, wingnut. You, know, you can tell by the way they introduce him. They go, bachelor number two is a shadowy lurking character. <laughs> whose hobbies include skulking. Please welcome from no fixed address. He's just a guy. Menacing figure shambles into the studio there, you know. Then they make the girl ask those questions, you know, laced with sexual innuendo. You know, girl go, that's your number two. If I were a popsicle, <laughs> what would you do to me then if I were a popsicle? That's what's testing the card here. And the guy goes, well, if you're a popsicle, huh? Well, first of all, I guess I'd uh, take your wrapper off. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And then I'd grab a hold of your sticks. If you know what I mean. And then I'd press you against the counter to your broken two. <laughs> Put happy in the freezer till later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Adam? You understand what I'm getting at? It's crazy. But uh, a lot of violence on TV. You know, kids aren't supposed to watch violence now on the TV. They're afraid maybe the kids will copy what they see on the screen, you know. I can't even get a funny cartoon anymore because some 12-year-old watched a particularly violent episode of the Roadrunner Coyote Show. And the next day they found him in the bottom of a canyon. <laughs> with two giant springs strapped to his feet. A, big <laughs> a couple of springs. Had a little umbrella in his hand. Sign said, yikes. But there's violence everywhere. You know, I was reading a paper, this guy, if you can believe this, a guy killed his family because the devil told him to. Can you believe that? Imagine that, killing your family, and then you go back to the devil, you go, yes, devil, I did as you instructed. I killed my family, and I chopped them up and put them in a duffel bag. Here they are. I'll be burying them tonight at the shallow grave by the side of the railroad track, as you have commanded, O oh, Lord, host of the hoary netherworld. <laughs> then the devil pulls off a mask, it's me, Bob! <laughs> You got me, Bob. You got me there. I... I got my family in a duffel bag over here. That's one for you there, Bob. This dirty dog.
So I had this dream. Do you ever have a dream, and then you wake up right in the middle of a great dream, and then you're back in your stinking life again? <laughs> so then you try to fall asleep, re-dream it? Man, that never works. Always end up with some weird mutation of your original dream there, you know? Like in the first dream, I was in a pool with Christy Brinkley, and we were swimming toward each other, and then I woke up, so I fell asleep again, and I end up shooting pool with David Brinkley. <laughs> Next guest uh, made his television debut on our uh, program last year, and uh, from tomorrow through Sunday, you can see this man working on stage at the Comedy Zone in Charlotte, North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, a uh, very funny man, Norm MacDonald. Norm! Thank you. Well, it's good to be here. I'm... Uh... I'm trying to become a better person now. You ever try to do that? That's, uh, I gave uh, some money to a homeless guy there on the street today, and uh, this is kind of odd. He had a dog with him. You ever see this? Homeless guy, he's got a dog. He doesn't have a home, you know, but he's got a dog, and uh, you know the dog's thrilled with this deal, you know. <laughs> dog's going, hey, pal, I can do this by myself pretty well, you know. Right there. The longest walk in the world to the dog, you know? <laughs> but, uh, I'm trying to become a better person. I'm trying not to lie as much as I used to, you know? I, uh, you know, I'm... You ever lie for no reason, you know? Usually there's a purpose to your lies, but sometimes, you know, just a big lie will spill out of your evil head there. You know, <laughs> you, know you don't even know why, you know? Like, guy will come up to you and go, Hey, you ever see that movie with Meryl Streep and the horse? And then you go, Yes. <laughs> then in the back of your head, you go, what the hell am I lying about over here? I stand to gain nothing by this lie. <laughs> the hell am I thinking back here in my head? But uh, I'm doing the best I can. They're trying to quit smoking, you know. That's a tough thing, boy. I, I smoked ever since I was a kid, you know. I always remember, remember one time I was a little kid, I was about nine years old, and I was sneaking a cigarette behind my garage, and my dad caught me, I'll never forget it, he hauled me in. I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know? What he did is he pulled out his big cigar. Must have been half the size of my arm, his giant cigar. Stuck it in my mouth, lit it up, made me smoke it all the way through, right to the end. And uh, that's when I started smoking cigars real heavy. So that, uh, that didn't work out there. Uh, plan backfired on him. But uh, my doctor, he's trying to talk me out of smoking. He showed me a picture. A smoker's lung. How? Oh, it was gross and disgusting. I think he showed me pictures of a uh, healthy guy's lung. How? Oh, it was gross and disgusting. <laughs> also. As well. So, turns out lungs are gross and disgusting. And uh, that's why we put them on the inside. You don't have to look at them all the time. You know, <laughs> put them under your jacket there so you don't have to see them. But uh, I'm trying to get in shape, you know, work out and stuff like that, you know. I'm not in good shape. I used to be in good shape when I was young. You know, that's when I looked good. I was in my peak physical condition back when I was one. <laughs> that's when I looked good, man. I can show you pictures of me when I was one. You wouldn't know me now. You know, I got to... <laughs> I even look good for my age. People come up to me and go, what are you, zero? <laughs> and I go, no, I'm one. They go, man, you don't look a day past zero. I'm not kidding you there. You look zero to me. I go, well, I'm one. But uh, I got to start working out, you know. I uh, haven't worked out for uh, ever. I never worked out. <laughs> but I got to start, you know, because I like watching guys, you know, bodybuilding contests. I saw this bodybuilding competition the other day, the Mr. World competition, you know. So the guy wins it. He's the best in the world. He's Mr. World. So in the end, they say, don't miss next month, the Mr. Universe contest. 
I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm putting my money on Mr. World on this one. You know, I figure he's a shoe in with his home planet advantage and everything. This guy, you know, he's Mr. World there. You know, he's got a, a hand sandwich. But uh, I don't know. You see a lot of them sports on the TV, you know? Saw cliff diving. There's a weird sport, huh? Guy diving off a cliff, you know? And uh, it's an odd sport. There's no way of telling who's a better cliff diver, you know? Like, if you survive at all, you know, you're a great cliff diver there. You know? <laughs> there's only two categories in cliff diving, guy was telling me. Uh, there's a grand champion and then stuff on a rock. <laughs> It's a tough sport to make a comeback in, I'll tell you that right now. A... Hey, you guys have been great. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay, Norm, nice job. Very funny. Thank you, sir. And whatever you do, don't touch the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my thanks to uh, Neil Patrick Harris as well, and of course, uh, Art Donovan. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>12 years and that's the first time a guest has slapped me yeah no Richard Simmons right no but that wasn't on the show so oh okay. ooh, well mm. that's... our next guest this evening made his network television debut uh, with us on our old show uh, now he is in his uh, first year as a featured performer on Saturday Night Live. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the very funny Norm MacDonald. Norm! Thanks, good to be here. I, uh, I feel a little uh, gross today. You know, I had, uh, had some of them fish sticks. You ever have them? And uh, they don't tell you on a package uh, how many you're supposed to eat. So I had uh, 40. So I'm feeling kind of gross or something, you know? Oh, I had a good holiday, though. A lot of Christmas presents, you know, a lot of good stuff there, you know? A lot of bad gifts, too. One guy gave me a, a lottery ticket. You ever get that as a gift? Man, that stinks. Huh? What the hell? Guy thinking giving you that, you know? Go, here you go. Nothing. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Nothing. You know, unless it wins, then it's something. But let's face it, you know, a guy give you a lottery ticket, you know, he don't want it to win. That's the last thing he wants there, you know. It's a, a nightmare that'd be, you know. Imagine that, you know, you get a call a week after Christmas, say, hey, Bill, what's happening? Yeah, I remember that ticket I gave you. 14 million bucks, huh? Ah, oh, good for you, Bill. Ah, Listen, uh, what did you get me again? I can't remember. I, I know I got you the 14 million bucks, but I, uh, I can't remember now. What, oh, yeah, it was a cup. Yes, I am enjoying it. Sure, I had a coffee out of it there and some tea, you know, and I'm hoping maybe soup or, I mean, I, the world's greatest fisherman it said on it, didn't it? Something like big smiling fish on it. Listen, Bill, I guess no chance that cup uh, skyrocketing in value in the next couple of days, huh? <laughs> All right, I gotta go now, Bill. I gotta go uh, rip my throat out with a <laughs> screwdriver. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I had a good holiday there, man. I had a lot of fun, you know, and uh, watched a lot of TV, you know. I enjoy watching that. I uh, watched Beavis and the Butthead. Do you like that show? That was a good show. <laughs> I like uh, Beavis, but I especially like the butthead. 
And uh, Star Search, you ever watch that? That's my favorite show, you know? Especially the junior dance category. That's my favorite, you know? And Ed McMahon always introduces them there, you know? Hot property! You know what I mean? They come out and they're dancing. Too cute for you! You know? And, they come out. and uh... And you don't even see junior dancers anywhere else. You know, that's the only show that you ever see them, you know? You know, it's never like you go, hey, honey, what do you want to do tonight? Maybe catch a movie, get a beer or something down to bar? Or, uh, hey, I know, what about that new club down there where uh, they got, uh, got the six-year-olds dancing? Maybe we'd go down there. <laughs> I understand Hot Property's going to be there tonight, you know? I, I've never seen them live. I've only seen them on TV. But uh, I love stars. They always name their groups like that in Star Search, too, right? Hot Property and The Next Big Thing and stuff like that, you know? As if that helps, you know? <laughs> so I was like, and now, this next band has been kicking around the Boca Raton area for the last 16 years. <laughs> now, America, say hello to Overnight Success! <laughs> Then it always looks bad when they lose, you know? So it's always, well, another tough decision for the judges. <laughs> Our challengers, overnight success, receive one and a quarter stars. <laughs> and where do they uh, get the judges on that show, do you? You ever, you ever see the judges on Star Search? You know, they always kind of got those lame credentials there, you know, kind of suspicious, you know? So I was like, and now it's time to meet our judges. The president of Tri-Media Artists. <laughs> he represents such stars as Metal Lock Lemon. <laughs> OK, thanks a lot, folks. Even here. Thank you, Norm. Oh. Very funny. Yes, sir. Hot property! <laughs> Norm, very funny. Uh, thanks very Good much. to have you with us, and uh, please come back anytime. It was I'd great fun. To. Very, very funny stuff. Uh, my thanks to Terry Bradshaw and uh, the hunky Jason Priestley. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Good night, everybody. is currently in the number one motion picture in the country called Billy Madison. He is also on a Weekend Update on Saturday Night Live. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Norm MacDonald. Norm! Thank you. Well, I'm feeling good. I'm uh, a little tired. You know, I started working out today. I've been kind of putting it off, but uh, I'm trying to get in shape, you know, I'm not in good shape, and uh, I used to be back when I was young, you know, that's when I was in, oh my God, oh, back then, oh my God, I was in my peak physical condition back when I was like, uh, I was like one, that's when I looked good, you should have seen me back then, holy God, you wouldn't know me now if you see me back when I was one. I even look good for my age. People come out and go, what, are you zero? What? And I go, no, I'm one. And they go, man, you don't look a day past zero. I'm not kidding you there. And I go, well, thanks, but no, I'm one. So uh, I tell you, though, man, I'm trying to be a better person. You know, I'm trying not to lie as much as I used to. I used to 
lie all the time for some reason. And, uh, you know, now I'm trying not to, you know, because, you know, sometimes there's a reason for your lies. You know, like you want to protect somebody's feelings or, you know, screw over your buddy Larry or something like that. But <laughs> do you ever just lie for no reason at all, folks? You know, just all of a sudden, a big lie will spill out of your evil head there. And you don't even know why, you know, like, you know, a guy will come up and go, hey, you ever see that movie with Meryl Streep and uh, the horse? And then you go, yes. <laughs> and then in fact, you're what the hell am I lying about over here? I, I stand to gain nothing by this lie. I, what the hell am I thinking back here in my head? But I'm having a good time. Bought a dog uh, the other day. Man, I tell you, go to this dog store. These things are expensive, huh? These dogs, can you believe it? I had no idea. Guy tries to sell me this dog, 600 bucks, you know, pit bull, you know, $600 dog. And, uh, you know, I don't want to buy a big $600 dog. I was looking to pay, you know, a buck, something like that. <laughs> two bucks, I don't know. That was, my ceiling was two bucks, and this guy's talking 600. So uh, the guy says, you want advice? He says, this is a pit bull. This will protect your valuables, you know? And I don't have a lot of valuable things there, folks. I don't own a lot, you know? I, I mean, I buy the pit bull. That would be the most valuable thing I own. You know? I, you know, I, I'd have to buy something to protect it, you know? I'd be, I'd be out shopping for Wolverines, you know? I'd be down at the Wolverine store the next day. But I don't want a pit bull. That's a crazy dog, man. That just rip your throat out, that dog, you know? You don't want a dog like that. I don't even know where that dog came from, either. When I was a kid, there weren't any pit bulls. And then, how the hell does that happen? Does your dog show up like that? <laughs> that? It's like crazy. It's like insane. <laughs> but I don't want, I never buy a dog. I always, when I'm buying my dogs, you know, I always think to myself, I go, hey, if this dog were to go berserk, you know, would I be able to take him? You know, I think that to myself. <laughs> I got one of them wiener dogs, you know, that's a nice dog. I could, I could beat the hell out of him if I wanted to, you know? I don't want to brag, but, you know, I don't have any problem with that. Because a wiener dog could never, like, jump up and rip your throat out. That can't happen, you know? You'd have to be lying down. That'd be the only way he could have a chance, you know? You'd have to be sleeping, like you're lying down asleep. And then maybe the wiener dog sneak up late at night, starts nibbling at your throat there, you know? And then, you know, maybe by daybreak, he's fine. He's got a hold of a vein. He's pulling out a vein, you know? And you wake up and go, oh, get away from me, a wiener dog. What the hell are you doing there? What do you think, you're a pit bull or something? You're not, you're nothing but a wiener dog. That's all you ever will be. I, I don't know. But, uh, no, I love my wiener dog. The worst thing I can give you, maybe you get a hickey. That's about all you can get, you know? That's embarrassing, folks. You ever have a hickey? Oh, my Lord, huh? Walking down the street there, you got an embarrassing hickey. You got to try to, and people see you in the street, you know, they go, hey, hey, you got a wiener dog over there, huh? You know? And then you go, ah, ah, ah. But I don't know. I love my dog. I buy him. So you ever buy a gift for your dog? Feel like a jackass, no? You're going out buying a... I got him one of them bones. I thought he wanted like one of them rubber bones, you know? I thought that's a good gift for a dog, you know? And I give it to my dog, and the dog's like, oh, great, it's a bone. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's not. A million laughs or so. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. It's not a, not a bone at all, huh? So, uh, I don't know. My grandmother, she's all excited I got a wiener dog. She sent me, she knitted him a sweater. That's the kind of, you know, I feel sorry for her, you know, knitting a dog as a sweater. But she sent me this sweater, and I don't, want to, I don't want to make the dog wear it, you know. It's humiliating for the dog, you know. Wear a sweater. It's ridiculous, you know. And then I figure, what happens, like, the dog gets lost, you know. He's, he's wearing a sweater. What the hell? <laughs> That's got to be Ted here in New York, you know. Them's mean streets if you're a, you know, wiener dog in a cardigan. They don't, you know, they don't last too long. Hey, thanks a lot, folks. You've been great.
next guest is a uh, very funny uh, person. He is the anchor of the Weekend Update on the very popular television program Saturday Night Live. Do me a favor, folks. Please welcome him back to the program. Here's Norm MacDonald. Norm! You know, uh, up in the office earlier the, uh, this afternoon, we were looking at some uh, videotape of your work on uh, Weekend Update. Very, very funny. You do a great job. Oh, thanks yeah, a lot. Very amusing stuff. Thanks, man. How did you get your start in, I know you originally was a stand-up comedian, but how did yeah. that begin? Uh, well, I was in Canada, you know, and then, uh, w yeah, yeah. And uh, so a lot of, uh, we don't do much show business in Canada. And then uh, uh, they called me from the States to do the show, uh, you know, Star Search? Star Search, yeah. Ed yeah. McMahon, the Star Search. Ed McMahon. Yeah. And so uh, it was the international star search. It was, it was a special star search. Because you're Canadian. Yeah, right. Hey, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I uh, was in that, and then I lost. It was horrible. Oh. I was, got the lowest score, like, I, ever. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's what they told me. And, uh, and so uh, uh, I was up against guys that were much more international. Like, there was one guy, he was from Africa, and uh -huh. he... He had like a big robe and a hat, and uh, and then another guy from Australia, and he had a, a hat too. And then I just had like a, a jag and a little tie. Yeah, you, know? you needed the hat, sure. <laughs> I didn't have a hat. So and uh, I, my plus all, I, all my stuff wasn't funny. That didn't help. No, that's <laughs> no. So, all the hats in the world won't help that. So uh, I went on. It was really humiliating. You oh, know? I'm sorry to hear and, that. Uh, and uh, nobody laughed. Even Ed didn't laugh. That, I knew I was doing bad. Uh, Ed McMahon wasn't laughing? Yeah, that's what he does for a living. Yeah, more or less, sure. So, he was taking some time off while I was out there. <laughs> and uh, he was just glaring at me there. And, uh, but he's, he was a good guy. He always makes a dramatic, tries to make it dramatic. Yeah, you know? it's a big moment. And, yeah, sure. so even if it's, you know, everybody knew I was going to lose. But <laughs> you have to go out with the other guy and uh, with the guys with the hats, and I knew I was going to lose. And then, uh, you know, he goes like, uh, another tough decision for the judges. <laughs> and uh, that was the only time I heard laughter. Uh -huh. when I was on set. And he, uh, he said, uh, our ja Canadian uh, champion, Norm MacDonald, receives Three quarters of a star! Right? Yeah, that's, that's not good. No, no. <laughs> that's not good at all. I figured it out later that to get three quarters of a star, three guys had to give me one star, and then one guy gave me none. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it worked it well, out. you've persevered and, and uh, succeeded in spite of that. <laughs> it, it, one of the nice things when you do a, a weekly variety show, like Saturday Night Live, and you have a different guest host each week, you get to meet a lot of really exciting, famous uh, show business luminaries. Yeah. I don't know a lot of them, though. You know, they they're, they're like famous, like they're kind of famous, like hot guys. The guys that are hot, sure, yeah. they're hot yeah. at the time. And I don't follow it that much. And uh, I don't know, unless it's like the Fonz or something. I don't know that many famous, <laughs> famous guys. And so uh, everybody, like everybody around the office, they're excited. It's a you buzz. Know? Yeah, they yeah. go, hey, uh, Norm, man, you wouldn't believe who's here this week. You're not going to believe it. And then I go, uh, what was it the Fonz? <laughs> <laughs> They go, uh, they go, no, it's that guy, uh, uh, Courtney Johnson from the L.A. Detective Story show, you know? And I go, yeah, he's good, too, you know? And then, I don't follow it. But, but you can't, you got to be nice. You're like, sure, you have to, they're because they're a yeah. guest in your home, more yeah, or less. Yeah, they are big stars, you know, and I, I, so I, I got to meet with them, and I just pretend, I pre go, you know, I pretend to know, you know, I go, yeah, you're good on the show, you're my favorite with the, with the gun, you know, and then, I don't know what to try. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Uh, well, again, you do a nice job. I hope you have a nice summer. Do you have plans for the summer? Yeah, I'm going to hang out with my uh, uh, wife and kid. You oh, that'll be good. Yeah, yeah that sounds like fun. a lot of fun. Yeah, Norm, thank you very fun. much for being here no, tonight. Thanks have a lot. great holiday weekend. Good to see you. Norm MacDonald. We'll be back with Elastica.
Welcome back to the big broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you that Mia Farrow is uh, something very, very appealing oh, about her. She's the greatest. And a fine actress, and you think about the, the life that she's led. It's an amazing story, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Yeah, I like her. I'm very fond of Terrific. her. Terrific. Yeah, very nice woman. Lives in Connecticut. You know, I live in Connecticut. You do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You live near her? Huh? You do live I... near her? I don't know. She wouldn't say. Ah. Did you notice she kept that vague kind of vague? She says, oh, yeah, in, in Connecticut. And then she says, you live up there, too. Yeah. You know, like maybe one day we'll bump into each other. Right. Exit 40 on I-95. <laughs> well, look, there's Mia Farrow and 18 kids. That's Could nice. Be. <laughs> Could be. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to tell you that our next guest is the very funny anchor man of the weekend update on the wildly successful and popular television program Saturday Night Live. When is that show on, Paul? It's a Saturday night. Saturday night yeah. it is? Yeah. When do they film the show? Well, do you they know? don't film it. They it's don't film it? It's live. Oh, it's live. Yeah, it's so a live they do show. It, they do it on Saturday Night Live. S Saturday Night Live, yeah. So we're seeing it as they're doing it's it. It's live on Saturday night. I'll be damned. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice welcome for Mr. Norm MacDonald. Norm, come on up. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Very good. Nice to see you. You know, I think the world of your work. I think you're very, very funny, man, and I, and I like the little weekend update thing you, you do like there. That? Yeah. yeah. And you, they involve you in the, the what do they call those, skits? Sketch, Every now, you get sketch, to be in a skit. Sketches. <laughs> do yes. you like being in the skits? I, I, I can't act, but, you yeah. know, I, whenever they need a guy to answer a door or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're damn good at it, Norm. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. And you're getting to be kind of a, uh, like a celebrity, like a big deal, aren't you? Yeah, kind of marginally. I was, uh, I did a celebrity golf tournament. Is it fun? It's all right, you know, but it didn't work out very well. Why not? Well, the thing is, the idea is you go and uh, you, there's three regular guys and then there's the celebrity. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so it'd be like a guy from the Rotary Club, a guy from the bank, a guy yeah, from the Kiwanis yeah. Club, and you right. playing a foursome. And so I showed up there and there were the three guys there. My tea time was like 10, 15, and so... One of the guys, he says to me, we're just standing there, and the guy says to me, he says, uh, hey, I wonder who our celebrity is. <laughs> That's so, no good. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, how to, you know, it's hard to identify yourself as a celebrity. <laughs> sure, others, yeah. You know? And uh, so, uh, I said it was me, and we... we golfed. I spent the whole, like, first nine holes trying to explain who, uh, who I was yeah. to the guy. <laughs> And plus, they were, uh, there were other guys, they were like celebrity spotting, they were like envious of all the others. So then I was like, hey, Scoey Mitchell, look at there, over there, you know, or uh, there's uh, Chachi, I was even doing it, yeah. you know? And, uh, it's kind of a thrill for you as well, <laughs> It was pretty yeah. cool to uh -huh. see these guys. And, uh, and plus, it, it doesn't help that I, I, I'm no good at golf. I stink at golf. Not so, very good. You know, not only, you know, I've been in the woods all the time trying to find my ball in there on the fairway going, hey, where the hell's that? Guy, we don't know who he is, you know? <laughs> it sounds like a fun outing, though, all yeah. in all. Yeah, that was fun. Now, when you go out, uh, generally, I would guess, though, that people usually know who you are when you're walking around New York City, especially. You get recognized all the time. A little bit. Sometimes, yeah. uh, like, uh, a lot of times I get, like, hey, hey, you're that guy from Saturday Night Live. And then I go, yeah, yeah. And then they go, that show sucks. No, see, that's, that's not good. That's not good. That's no good. And I go, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Sometimes, a lot of, guys, a lot of times, like, because I'm not, you know, I'm not famous, but one guy will recognize me, and everybody else won't. So it'll just make oh. a big, like, go, hey, 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 and then everyone looks at me, what? <laughs> and I go, I'm the guy, I'm a guy from the TV. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to get famous, you know, that's my big goal. Really, to not be famous? Not famous enough so that I can't walk down the street, right. you know, like you, you know, where your life is... <laughs> Your life is hell, but I want to. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to get famous enough so that if I had, you know, if I ever had like, uh, uh, you know, problems with my liver or something, I could get another one quick. You, know, that kind of... you want to go to the top of the list? Yeah. Just... How is your liver? Everything all right there? Everything. No, okay, good. Everything's good. fine Knock with my wood, liver, but God. if I get famous enough, I'm going to hit the booze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice to know that you have that as kind of an insurance policy. <laughs> right. yeah. But you, I know you, uh, in addition to the television work, you've done films, you've worked in movies, you've been in a couple of films, haven't you? One. Yeah? Do yeah. You, <laughs> do you like that kind of work? 
Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not a good actor, but it was, I was called Billy Madison. It was my buddy Adam Sandler put me yeah, in the movie. Yeah, I remember the film, Because sure. uh, I had nothing to do that summer. Needed a guy to answer the door. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was in the heat. And uh, uh, at one point, I, uh, I passed out. No. Yeah, I was like, I was supposed to be lying on a lawn chair. That uh -huh. was my big scene. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they tell you to do something funny. And, and so I was lying on the lawn chair. And all of a sudden, it was like so hot out. I got like, uh, later they told me like sensor. And then I, 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 like, I passed Boom. out. You're out. And then they chucked a bunch of ice on me. And I woke up. And uh, they were very concerned because uh, uh, I guess if a guy dies on a movie, it's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Especially a guy that they didn't even like in the uh, movie. In the <laughs> puts a real damper on those ticket sales. <laughs> yeah. So you're all right, though. It's, it wasn't your oh, liver. Oh, yeah. No, okay. no, it wasn't my liver. <laughs> yeah. You're Canadian, right? Yeah, I'm from Canada. Yeah, we're about in Canada. Quebec City? Quebec City. Yeah, you know yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Now, are, are they, are they uh, removing themselves from the rest of the province in the country? Yeah, they're going to the, be leaving. They, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did that vote go through? Wasn't that a referendum or something in Canada? Yeah, they, well, they're French. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> so we don't really care. Oh, you don't care? <laughs> well, if you don't care, what the hell? Uh, I tell you what, let's do. Let's you and me, right after the show, get ourselves cleaned up real nice, and we'll sure. go out to dinner with Mia Farrow. Oh man, she is the most beautiful she great? girl I've I ever seen in my life. life. Yeah. And a fine actress. Have you seen her act recently? Um, <laughs> you know what I saw was Alice. I loved Alice. Yeah. yeah. God, that was a great movie. <laughs> Let's see, is the show, are you doing a show this weekend? Yeah, Who's Gabriel the big host? Burns. Yeah, it. Gabriel Burns, fine he's, actor. He's great. Yeah, he's yeah, famous. He yeah. could get a liver like that. There you go. <laughs> Norm MacDonald, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Thanks for that. Uh, we got to do another commercial, and we'll continue here with George Clooney. Come on back. I'm thankful because it's a new word in the English language, and this year, I get to O.J. the turkey. I'm thankful for my wonderful new baby boy, who is a pure joy and is currently dating Cher. <laughs> <laughs>